السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear little children, tonight is the night of the 9th of Jumada al-Awwal 1443 years after the Hijrah or the migration of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu which coincides with uh, the 13th of December 2021 And today I welcome you back to our series of Kindness to Creation and we are going to talk about the animal kingdoms or the nations in the animal kingdom the nations or the ummah in the animal kingdom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to this umam to these nations in surah al-an'am verse number 38 wa ma min dabbatin fil ardi wa la ta'iri yatiru bi janahayhi illa umamun amthalukum ma farratna fil kitab min shay thumma illa rabbihim yuhsharun the translation of which is there is not a moving creature on the earth, nor a bird that flies with its two wings, but are communities like you. Huh? They are umam, nations like you. Like who? Like the human being. Allah is talking to us, the men and the jinn. Ma farratna fil kitabi min shay. We have not neglected anything in the book. He is talking about the book meaning the law al mahfud as from the tafsir we know. Meaning everything is recorded there. We know that everything that will happen until the day of judgment is a decree of Allah. Allah knows it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wrote it down. This is talking about the kataba. Thumma ila rabbihim yuhsharun. And then they will be raised back or, uh, uh, or gathered to, to their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is referring to the day of judgment. And this verse is a proof that all the animals, the birds and the beasts, all the animals, they will be raised on the day of judgment as the raising of the men and the jinn will happen the, the the understanding of this verse which means as follows all animals ancient extinct or any animals which are current whether they are tame or whether they are wild whether they are the animals of the land or the ocean or the air which includes the birds beasts uh, uh, domestic and wild animals including insects everything that crawls and creeps on the earth everything is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah provides for them and Allah takes care of them and Allah is the razzaq Allah is the provider uh, uh, of their food and of their well-being and of their dwellings and so on and so forth and everything that they are given that these animals it's a decree of Allah like the way Allah decreed everything for us, the human being and the jinn too. And this verse also teaches us that they will die and they will be raised back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single species and every single member of the species will be brought back to life on the day of judgment. On that great day when everybody meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then as we know that there will be judgment between the animals and between the animals and other uh, uh, like the human being uh, and then after the judgment will be over the animals of course all of them will be turned into dust they will not go to hellfire neither there is any proof that any of the animals will go to paradise the implication of this verse and we know from our uh, 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 surroundings the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us the creation as we see in the creation we see that this verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Illa umamun amthalukum, this actually is so beautiful they are nations like us they have many things which mirrors what we have for example like the way the human nation has different varieties we are not all of same color same race right each area has its own particular group of people. The Chinese are different than the Koreans, they are different than the Japanese, they are different from the Indians, they are different from the Europeans, they are different from the, uh, you know, the, the, the Africans, they are different from the Americans, and so on and so forth. Each of the 
races and each of the areas have their own culture and own color and own features that you can see and you can even the facial structure and the way we talk it matches we know that this person most likely is from this region we can tell the same way the animals for example the nation of the cows not all the cows are same there are cows which are Indian there are cows which are different breeds different types each of them are different from each other similarly birds not all birds are same beasts not all beasts are same and so on and so forth like the way the human nation has sects and society and hierarchy right we have our king our president our leaders similarly in the nation of the animals we see the such thing we see that the bird the, the the bees have queen the ants have queen the lions have their king and they serve their uh, uh, you know the, uh, their king and the queen and the rest of the people they work in a very systematic manner the rest of the members of their society work in a systematic manner to keep their nest or to keep their heart intact this is something that we learn from all the documentaries that we see about the animals and just amazes us amazes us like the way the human being they reproduce the similarly the animals they reproduce like the way our mothers they suckle us the animals they suckle their their uh, their babies especially those who give them milk and those who don't they take care of their babies in other ways but the point is the mothers they have so much love and affection for their youngest as even the lion which is ferocious animal but they lick their baby and they take care of their baby and also they when their babies are naughty they punish them they bite them or they hold them in a certain way to tell them this is wrong or they growl at them to teach them what they're doing is not correct all of this matches many of the features that we have in our nation for example like the way amongst us and the ulama they explain this verse in this manner like the way we have short and tall ugly and beautiful uh, strong and weak for example similarly amongst animals we have not all cats are beautiful not all cats are strong not all cats if you're talking about the cats are friendly some cats they like to hiss all the time and some cats they are very lovable adorable they'll come and they will uh, 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 you know par at you and you, you, you they, they want you to uh, you know uh, 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 take care of them love them carry them other cats don't like it so each of them have different personalities like the way the human being have different personalities like the way we share bonds with each other friendship and bonds right we love each other we care for each other similarly the animals they create bonds sometimes the, these bonds uh, even extend towards other species we saw sometimes uh, you know a documentaries where a donkey is a friend of a cow an intimate bond a horse has a friendship with a ostrich for example a dog has a friendship with a cat a dog has a friendship with a bird a cat has a friendship with a chicken there are so many examples in the animal kingdom that we see and that shows us that they are like nations like the human being like the way we have emotion we get angry we get jealous we are happy we fight we love we care for each other similarly the, the animals have the same kind of emotion those who have pets they know when their pet is sad when their pet is happy when their pet is a pet is uh, sick they can figure this out and all of these are basically exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to in this verse so this uh, 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 study of uh, the animal kingdom and the examples that we see in the Quran uh, when we study them properly uh, and we hear about the in those people who work for the environment the protection of the environment the scientists when they talk about a species getting extinct okay as long as we do our best to protect them for the sake of Allah then this will be an ibadah so we understand that when there is a a, uh, you know a, a group of animals or birds that are, are, are uh, a certain kind of species that is being affected by our uh, action for example you know there's a lot of talk about um, uh, plastic pollution uh, 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 you know not to throw garbages here and there and all of these are Islamic concepts even in, in the Sunnah as we will 
in this series that we will hear a lot of the things that the the the, the you know the the uh, those people who stand up for the rights of the animals they do they're ingrained in the teaching of Islam however we do not go into extreme as some people they do so we do not go into extreme in supporting the rights of the animal forgetting the right of Allah that is not allowed and that's why this study or this caring for the animals and the nature and the environment it must be done uh, with the teaching of the Quran and the Sunnah and after consulting our scholars most of the things are something good that we can do like plant a tree don't just cut trees don't just uh, you know pollute, uh, use toxic materials nowadays when people the garden the gardening you go to the markets you have all sorts of products they're selling they're telling you you can uh, uh, you know boost your uh, harvest by using this product before you use those product make sure they are good and safe for the environment because if you put those product some of these are chemicals which destroys, destroys the soil and also it destroys the habitats of the good bugs, including the bees, which the scientists are talking about a lot nowadays. The bees are getting extinct uh, and this is a sign that uh, we are using a lot of pollutants in the, in, uh, and, and harming the, the nature. This kind of discussion when we hear from the scientists these are beneficial and what we can do is we can transfer this into ibadah how that we do not use these products not just for the environment but for the sake of allah and that's when this will be an ibadah now how much impact we are going to make that we do not know but at least from our end whatever we do individually this will inshallah at one point will communally make, make an effect and even if that does not to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this will be incredible. We will, from, from Him we will receive incredible amount of rewards for saving the lives of these nations which Allah created and uh, uh, as for us to see as a sign of His generosity and of His great kingdom and of His greatness subhanahu wa ta'ala. In many countries, for example, we see the people that treat the dogs and the cats in a very harsh way. Um, uh, there is no reason but they are just walking and they're kicking the dog. Or hitting that with a stick or a or a stone, and that is being copied by little kids because they see the uh, elders doing that in the street. So they treat the cats and dogs as if they are nothing, and this is absolutely wrong. For example, in many countries, they treat the animals as a target shooting. For example, in many countries, they use the animals uh, to do dangerous sports. We have spoken about this in some of our classes. All of this is Islamically forbidden there are certain things that we can do with the animals for games and for races and so on and so forth but making sure that they are fed and they're taken care of properly inshallah let's look at the, some of the verses in the quran which will make us understand what we are talking about the nations of the animals allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for example in surah shura fatiru samawati wal ard the creator of the heavens and the earth referring to allah ja'ala lakum min anfusikum azwaja he has made for you spouses from amongst yourselves. So Allah is talking about us, how Allah created spouses for us. al anami, and look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, connects the animal kingdom with us. al anami azwaja, and also from the animals, Allah has created their spouse, their mate. Yadra'ukum fihi laysa kamithlihi shay'un wa huwa al basir. So that uh, 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 he he creates you in the womb, meaning like he produce uh, through this uh, uh, the like the same way the human being they have babies, the same way the animals they have babies, and that matches what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentions in Surah Al An'am. They are nations like us. Then Allah Taala reminds us that when we are uh, discussing the creation, we have to keep in mind that we do not make Allah look like the creation. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ Okay, that's why a Muslim never thinks about Allah like a creation or imagines Allah like a creation. And that stops a Muslims to draw pictures of God, to make idols and, uh, you know, dolls and then, then think that this is their Allah. Forbids. Why? Because Allah is not like the creation. وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ 
Basir, but he is all hearing and all seeing. So he has attributes, but those attributes of seeing and hearing is not like the attributes of the seeing and hearing of the creation. So there is a great lesson in all of this uh, with regards to Tawheed and with regards to the animal kingdom that we see around us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions in the Quran about their languages. The animals, they have languages. Like the way we have languages, they communicate with each other in their own language. So for us, the sound of a cat might just seem like meow, or the dog is like bow, or the lion is like roar, roaring. But this is for us. Why? Because we do not understand their language. Just imagine when you hear a Chinese person talking, all what you hear is chang chung wang wang chang chung hang chung. And the same way, if you hear an Indian person talking, bang, 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 that's what you would hear. But for them, it's not like that. For them, it's like the way we are speaking in English. Every single sound makes sense to them. Similarly, are the animals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to this in Surah in Namal, in the, in, the, in the story of the ants, in verse number 16. وَوَرِثَ سُلَيْمَانُ دَعُودَ And Sulaiman inherited Dawood, talking about Sayyidina Sulaiman, the Nabi Allah, uh, the Messenger of Allah, Sulaiman, who inherited the Prophethood from his father Dawood alayhi salam. وَقَالْ And he said, meaning here talking about Sulaiman, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ O mankind, وَلِّمْنَا مَنْتِقَ الطَّيْرِ I have been taught the languages of the, the birds, وَأُوْتِينَا مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ And we have been, I have been given something from everything, إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُوَ الْفَضْلُ الْمُبِينَ Indeed, this is a great grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we see that he is talking about the, the, the chirping of the birds. Birds, they don't also, all of them have the same sound as you know, right? Each of the birds have their unique sound. So he was taught this chirping, mantak, mantak attair, speech. He, he, when, he, when we hear the birds chirping, we don't understand what they're saying. But Sulaiman salam was taught that by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How this teaching was done, we do not know, but he was taught. The point is here, they have languages. Then in verse number 18, Allah ta'ala says, about Prophet Sulaiman when he is traveling with his uh, uh, his uh, army. Hatta ida atau ala wadin namal. Until when they came, the, the army of Sulaiman came to the valley of an ant. Qalat namlatun, one of the namla, namla is ant, she said, Ya ayyatuhan namal. Said, O the nation or O the community of ants. Udukhulu masakinakum. Enter your house. Enter your, uh, you know, your dwelling. La yahtimanna Sulaimanu wa junuduhu wa hum yashurun. O ants, enter your dwelling, lest Sulaiman and his host crush you while they do not know. Okay, and the ulama, they have deduced tremendous amount of benefit from this ayah. So the ants were speaking. Allah mentions that. Now look at. The next verse Allah says, فَتَبَسَّمَ ضَاحِكَ ضَاحِكَ مِّن قَوْلِهَا Sulaiman smiled in amusement, alayhi salam, min qawliha, from her speech. The speech of who? The speech of the ant. Now how did Prophet Sulaiman hear this? Or how this speech was communicated to Prophet Sulaiman? That Allah Zala doesn't mention. What Allah mentioned is that he knew about that statement is possible that Prophet Sulaiman heard it directly and he also understood, Allah taught him the language of the Namla. That's possible, very possible. Or Allah inspired him to know what the ant is communicating to other ants. Whichever the case, Allah knows best, but he smiled. And this amazing features that was given to the kingdom of Prophet Sulaiman did not make him arrogant. Rather, he when he heard this and he smiled, he thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what he said. He said, uh, 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 okay, then the, well, I mean, you know, that let, let's not uh, discuss that right now. Uh, let's move on to the next. Um, Okay, the animal kingdom, they can learn uh, techniques and they can be taught different skills like the human nation. 
like the human nation. For example, we know that certain animals can be taught to hunt, to uh, race, to play, to carry messages like the pigeons. They were used in the old days. Even today, maybe they use it for sending messages. They used to work as messengers and so on and so forth. So these are skills an animal can be taught like the way the human uh, beings can be taught certain skills. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to this in Surah Al-Ma'idah. Allah ta'ala says, Yes, alunaka madha uhilla lahum. They ask you, O Muhammad, about what is lawful for them. Qul uhqul uhilla lakum tayyibat. Say to them, O Muhammad, that Allah has made the good things tayyibat, the good things halal for them. And here is the shahid. Wa ma'allamtum min al-jawarihi mukallibina Hmm? And uh, those beasts and birds of prey which you have trained as hounds, meaning like to go and catch your prey, training and teaching them in the manner as directed to you by Allah. So what is this training? First of all, these animals have to be trained to go when we release them. If we don't release them, they are not supposed to go. So we say Bismillah and we release them and they are supposed to go and they are supposed to catch the prey for us and not eat from that. If they eat from it, we are not supposed to eat it. Because maybe he caught it for himself. So these are the training Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching, uh, Allah ta'ala is referring to in the Quran, the, the birds and the beasts which we use to, uh, you know, uh, catch our Pray. Uh, also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran about how in the kingdom of Sulaiman salam, the birds were trained. For example, we know the specific story of Hudhud, the bird who was trained to bring him news. Okay, uh, And then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah in Naml, in surah, verse number 17, about the birds being part of the the, the army of Sayyidina Sulaiman alayhi salam. Allah ta'ala says, وَحُشِرَ سُلَيْمَانَ جُنُودُهُ مِنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنسِ وَالطَّيْرِ فَهُمْ يُوزَعُونَ يوزعون. And they, there were gathered before Sulaiman his hosts or his army of jinn and men and birds and they all were set in battle order. So they were ranked. So these birds were taught to fight in the, the ranks of the uh, the army of Sayyidina or Nabina, uh, Nabi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Sulaiman sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Like we have mentioned, my brothers and sisters, that animals have emotions, mercy and love. And this is referred to in one of the most beautiful hadith in the books of the hadith. And I'm going to mention to you the different version in Sahih Muslim. Okay, and this hadith is referred, uh, narrated by two great Sahabi, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu and Salman al-Farisi radiallahu anhum ardahum. That the Prophet Sallallahu said, جَعَلَ اللَّهُ الرَّحْمَةَ مِئَةَ جُزْئِنْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created mercy in 100 parts. Okay? فَأَمْسَكَ عِنْدَهُ تِسْعَةً وَتِسْعِينَ And he kept with him 99 parts of it. وَأَنزَلَ فِي الْأَرْضِ جُزْءًا جُزْءًا وَاحِدًا And he revealed, sent down, bestowed upon the earth, the earth, only one part. In another narration, وَوَضَعَ وَاحِدًا بَيْنَ خَلْقِهِ And he spread only one part between his creation. وَخَبَأَ عِنْدَهُ مِئَةَ إِلَّا وَاحِدًا And he kept with him 100 minus 1, which is 99 parts. Then the Prophet said, فَمِنْ ذَلِكَ الْجُزْئِ And from this one part of the mercy that is spread in the whole earth, تَتَرَاهَمُ الْخَلَائِقُ حَتَّى تَرْفَعَ الدَّابَّةُ حَافِرَهَا حَافِرَهَا عَنْ وَلَدِهَا خَشْيَةَ أَنْ تُسِيبَهُ And it is because of this one part of the mercy, there is mutual love amongst the creation so much that so much that when the animal it lifts its hoof, it lifts its hoof, and the baby comes under the the you know the four legs of the mom, mom she keeps it up, she does not put it down, because she fears that if she puts it down, it's going to hurt her baby, who is trying to drink her milk or maybe seeking protection under her body. 
This is from the mercy of Allah. In another version, Allah Ta'ala says, إِنَّ لِلَّهِ مِئَةَ رَحْمَةٍ أَنزَلَ مِنْهَا رَحْمَةً وَاحِدَةً بَيْنَ الْجِنِّ وَالْإِنْسِ وَالْبَهَائِمِ وَالْهَوَامِ Allah has 100 mercy for, mercy for, there are 100 parts of mercy for Allah and He has sent down only one of the parts for the jinn, for the human, for the baha'im, for the beast and also for the insects. Okay, فَبِهَا يَتَعَاطَفُونَ And with this one part of the mercy, they show love for one another. وَبِهَا يَتَرَاحَمُونَ And with this one part, they show mercy for each other. وَبِهَا تَعْطِفُ الْوَحْشُ عَلَى وَلَدِهَا And with this one part, the beast takes care or shows affection to its creation, to its youngest. In another version, Allah Ta'ala, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, كُلُّ رَحْمَةٍ طِبَاقَ مَا بَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Each part of the mercy, the extent of which will en encompass everything between the heavens and the earth. This is how humongous one of the part of the rahmah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is. فَجَعَلَ مِنْهَا فِي الْأَرْضِ رَحْمَةً فَبِهَا تَعْتِفُ الْوَالِدَةُ عَلَى وَلَدِهَا And one part of it is sent on the earth and with this the, the parent they show mercy to the baby. وَالْوَحْشُ وَالطَّيْرُ And the beast and the birds بَعْدُهَا عَلَى بَعْدُ They show affection and care for each other. فَإِذَا كَانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ أَكْمَلَهَا بِهَذِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ And on the day of judgment, Allah will complete His mercy or fulfill that 99 parts He kept with Him he will bestow upon the creation to save the creation from the punishment of the hellfire. So, wretched are those. Wretched are those people who will not be able to be protected and saved from the hellfire. After these humongous parts of mercy, Allah will spread on the day of judgment to save the creation or those who are responsible, the men and the jinn, from the punishment of the hell. These are... Uh, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to in Surah Al-An'am for them to be like a nation, like nations like us. One of the greatest ID card for the nations of the animals are they are the slaves of Allah. All of them. And they glorify Allah. And they know their prayer. And they recognize the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is specific subject we are going to discuss in our next session but let me finish this small talk if you want to call it small uh, with the verse surah nur verse number 41 allah says alam tara anna allah yusabbihu lahu man fi samawati wal ard don't you see uh, that allah is the one who is glorified he is the one who is glorified by the, by the by everything that is in the heavens and the earth when allah tara says everything Everything means all the animals and even all the inanimate objects like this table, this stuff, everything, the stones, the water, everything glorifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالطَّيْرُ صَافَّاتٍ And the birds they spread their wings in the sky. كُلٌّ قَدْ عَلِمَ صَلَاتُهُ All of them they know their salah. So they have their prayer. Talking about the birds and the beasts and all sorts of animals. وَتَسْبِيحَهُ And they also know their tasbih, glorification. وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِمَا يَفْعَلُونَ And Allah is all aware of what they do. So all of this happens by the command and the permission and the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we understand from this is that these uh, animals, they are a believer in Allah. They, are belie they, they believe in the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They recognize Allah, they glorify Allah, and they pray to Allah. However, we do not understand their tasbih. Allah has taught them, and Allah knows how they make the tasbih. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.